The Ghostly Tale of the Phantom Boatman If you've ever taken a boat trip up the Helford River in Cornwall, you may have come across the famous Frenchman's Creek. But what you may not have come across, or even heard of, is a place called Dead Man's Creek. Rumours say this creek is haunted by a ghostly figure who will lead unwary travellers to a sticky end in the thick mud at low tide. Billy and Betty Tregools were thinking about those rumours. It was the last day of the summer holidays, and they were sitting on the banks of the river, craving one last adventure before school began again. They noticed an old boatman sitting on the bank, staring out across the river. He wore a thick black coat, stained with sea salt and flecks of mud. His hair was long and white, dotted with bits of straggly seaweed and sea foam. Ask him, said Billy. Why me? replied Betty. It's your idea, you ask. Ask me what? said the old man suddenly. He turned his head to look at them. Under a heavy brow, his eyes almost appeared to be glowing like red coals. Billy gulped. Dead Man's Creek, he said hesitantly. Is it true what they say about it being haunted? Who's to say what's true and what's not? The old man replied. I have heard whispers and hushed words about such things but nothing more. What I can say is, Dead Man's Creek is a dark, mysterious place, full of mist, twisted shadows, and sounds not meant for the ears of the living. A place to be avoided, if you ask me, especially at low tide. Well, as everyone knows, children are often reckless and brave, and the Tregools were no exception. How do we find it? said Betty. Is there a map? Dead Man's Creek appears on no map. But, for a small fee, I can guide you there, said the old man, narrowing his eyes. Ha! I reckon we can find it all right by ourselves. We don't need to pay someone to take us, you silly old man, laughed Billy. Them that doesn't pay one way, pays another, replied the old boatman, as the children ran off to get their boat. An hour later, they were putt-putt-putting along the river. They had seen nothing that might be Dead Man's Creek, though, and were about to give up, when Billy shouted, There! There! Look over there, by the bank! They saw what looked like the entrance to a small creek, almost obscured by overhanging branches, but definitely there. The trees were speckled with black crows, which stared at them as they drew nearer. It's almost like they're guarding the entrance, said Betty. She steered the boat in as Billy pushed the branches aside, scattering the crows. Caw, caw! into the air. Where the main river had been bright and warm with sunshine, inside the creek was a low mist, and the air felt damp and chilly. At the water's edge, thick tree roots crept into the water like the legs of giant spiders and further in they could see the remains of rotted boats sticking up through the mist like the skeletons of strange creatures. All along each bank the crows had returned and silently watched as they made their way further into the creek. The water was getting shallower now, and the children realised the tide was falling fast. We better turn round, said Billy. If the water gets any lower, we'll get trapped in the mud. Just a bit further, said Betty. This place is pretty creepy. Just a bit further. As she spoke, they felt the bottom of the boat jar against the riverbed. Seconds later, it ground to a halt, 
held tight in the thick ooze below them. We're stuck, cried Billy. Just then, through the thick mist ahead, they saw the figure of a man waving a lantern. This way, came a voice. This way. We'll have to try and wade over there. It must be dry land, said Betty. They climbed over the side and felt their feet sink into the soft mud. As they struggled forward towards the light, the mud seemed to grip them tighter and tighter. We're coming, called Billy. Thanks, mister. With each step, however, the children were sinking deeper into the mud. It was becoming harder to move, and before long they were up to their waist. Help! We're stuck! They called out in desperation. We can't move! They struggled and wriggled, but it only made them sink deeper into the black ooze, and soon only their heads were visible. They could see the figure moving towards them now, the light from the lantern swinging gently over his head. As he drew nearer, they could see his feet were hovering a few inches above the surface of the mud. He wore a thick black coat, his hair was long and white, and his eyes were glowing red like hot coals. It was the old boatman from before. Them that doesn't pay one way, pays another, they heard him say as they sank beneath the grasping mud, never to be seen again. <laughs>